We begin today with the news that another innocent civilian has become the victim of a U.S. drone strike in Yemen. The attack was thought to have been intended for suspected Islamist militants in the southeastern part of the country. However, it took the life of a farmer instead. Witnesses say the farmer had been walking home in the village of Al Hauta early Wednesday when he was abruptly killed by the shrapnel of two rockets. According to Reuters, a local government official has confirmed the report but has declined to give further details. This attack comes just a month after the massive drone strike killed at least 15 people traveling in a wedding convoy. Human rights organizations argue that there were no Islamic militants in that convoy and that only re innocent civilians were targeted. These are just two of the most recent drone attacks that have contributed to a heightened concern amongst Yemenis and those in the international community over the CIA's controversial and classified drone warfare program. But this news comes just as Congress is trying to make it more difficult to bring transparency to the program. According to the Washington Post, Congress inserted a secret prov provision in a massive government spending bill introduced this week that keeps lethal counterterrorism operations under the umbrella of the CIA. While it's still unknown what is exactly in the provision, it allegedly prohibits funding from being used to transfer unmanned aircraft from the CIA to the Pentagon. Now here to talk about these latest developments and the implications going forward, I'm joined by Noreen Shaw, an advocacy advisor at Amnesty USA. Thanks for joining me, Noreen. Thanks for having me. So in 2013, there was a lot of buzz about uh, the idea that the drone program could switch from the jurisdiction of the CIA to the Defense Department. President Obama himself really wanted to see this happen, yet here we are with this provision. Um, you know, what happened? Bottom line is Congress is not invested enough in getting this program out of the hands of the CIA and out of the hands of a secretive agency. The Department of, uh, Department of Defense runs a drone program, we think in Yemen. The CIA has a drone program, we think in Pakistan. But neither of these organizations is running the program with any kind of accountability to the public about potentially unlawful civilian casualties. Sure. Well, the Pentagon does have some strong checks and balances that would certainly be more visible in the CIA or so you would think. Uh, do you think it's possible that Congress is really trying to keep this program in the dark? I think there's certain members of Congress who don't see the need to end the secrecy of the program. But we're talking about using lethal force around the globe with drone technology and not telling either the international community or the American public what's going on, who's being killed. Absolutely. And this is not only a funding issue. I mean, the provision allegedly could do more than just place restrictions on funding. What else could be in an appro appropriations bill that could determine how the drone program is controlled? Well, the problem here is that we're talking about a classified annex. A lot of lawmakers didn't even know that this secret annex and this provision were go was going to be inserted into the appropriations bill. We haven't even seen debate in Congress about whether this is a good thing. So we've got Senator John McCain raising questions about it and why it was kept so secret. And fundamentally, that's what the program's all about. It's about operating and using lethal force around the world without informing anybody about what's going on. And interestingly, it's not just President Obama who addressed some concern uh, over this. Even the CIA director, John Brennan, uh, has specifically warned that the drone program in some ways is sort of diverting the CIA from its primary mission of intelligence gathering. Um, you know, can you talk about sort of how the role of the CIA has really sort of changed over the years to take on this uh, this drone warfare program? You know, the CIA has a record of human rights abuses, whether it's torture or secret detention. And not only has it committed abuses, but it's tried to evade accountability for those abuses. So for us to put lethal force, that kind of power in the hands of a secret spy agency, it really raises some questions. Now, the military has also been really secretive about civilian casualties, hasn't been willing to say whether in these Yemen drone strikes civilians have died or whether it's investigated. Bottom line, the administration needs to commit to reform. And if Congress is getting in the way of that, then there's really a struggle that needs to be had and the administration needs to push back. Can the administration do anything? at this point? I mean, Certainly. can President Obama make a directive and, you know, can he take sort of unilateral action on this? President Obama can send people to the Hill to talk to members of Congress and get this straightened out. But what we haven't seen in the last six months is a real push from the administration to end the secrecy about drone strikes. It's hard to give away power once you take it, but that's fundamentally important to a program that's setting a precedent not only in the United States, but around the world. Did we see a change at all after his speech that he gave his 
um, you know, very powerful speech in May of 2013 at the National Defense University. Uh, was there a trend, you know, going away from drone strikes, or did we see, you know, what was the trend sort of when it comes to the drone warfare program after that? There are fewer reported drone strikes since that May 2013 speech, but we don't actually know who's being killed in those strikes. And certainly the wedding drone strike of last month, where 15 people were killed, raises a lot of questions about whether the rules President Obama announced are actually being followed. And of course, it's incredibly hard to hold the administration accountable to its promises when it won't even tell us what's actually happening. And we know that, you know, the jurisdiction is probably likely to stay under the CIA. So like you were just mentioning right now, you know, when we have these drone attacks abroad, such as the, the wedding convoy, isn't it just so easy then for, you know, the CIA to say, well, you know, this, we can't release this information because it would compromise intelligence. And then, therefore, we get no transparency whatsoever. You know, the fact is, is that when the U.S. military operates in other parts of the world, including Afghanistan and in Iraq, it faces a lot of public scrutiny about its actions. And in response to that public scrutiny, it's developed over time uh, an ability to answer the qu questions, investigate, acknowledge what's happening, so that when a family sees that its family member is killed, it's not just met with silence. It's met with some kind of investigation. We haven't seen that from the CIA, and that's because fundamentally they're an agency that operates outside of the law and outside of public accountability. Well, it seems like Congress has already passed this uh, sweepingly, 359 to 67, and then the Senate is supposed to vote on it this week, and then it's supposed to be voted by the president. Um, I mean, do you think you know, unless the, the administration comes forward and does something, it's pretty much going to move forward at this point. I don't think it's the end of the ball game. I think there's lots of members of Congress who are incredibly concerned about civilian casualties from drone strikes who aren't sold on the idea that the CIA should be running the show and should be doing it so secretly. Well said. Well, thank you so much, Noreen Shaw, Advocacy Advisor at Amnesty USA. Thanks for having me.